as we have in the past, so that you can make up to a two-minute uh, presentation, Mark. Okay. Thank you very much, Mark, the uh, Rotary Club for this, and everybody in attendance. I uh, moved to Alton in 1999 uh, with my uh, three children and my wife of 21 years. We do uh, homeschool our uh, children. Uh, I've been coming up to Alton all my life, up to the Alton Bay uh, Christian Conference Center. I spent uh, 21 years in the military serving in the CBs and the New Hampshire National Guard, 14 years enlisted, and then went through OCS to uh, become a commissioned officer, retiring in 2007. I do hold a bachelor's degree in business from the Southern New Hampshire University. I've sat on the budget committee for three years as uh, vice chair and budget chair this year. And I'm, uh, I started my own business in 2004. Uh, a machine shop in Epsom, New Hampshire. Thank you very much. Thank you. Steve. Yeah. Uh, hi, everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, it's good to see we had a very good turnout tonight. It's better than I've seen in the past. Um, I've been on the board. I know a lot of people here. Uh, I've been in town for 20-something years now, and uh, when I originally came up here, I used to own the, uh, the busy corner store. Most people know it as Amy Lynn's now. Um, as a matter of fact, Mark started to work for, for me. It was yeah. known as a Papa Cow store, too. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it, uh, you know, I've been, I wanted to get involved here so that I could make a difference. And I talked with a number of different people and they had asked me back then to run for selectmen and uh, they liked uh, the way I thought and the way I felt. And it's a beautiful town and I wanted to be involved in it. And do my part, and I'll be do my share. So that's what I did. I got on board. Oh, it's almost 12 years now, and uh, I've enjoyed it. I've learned a lot. Uh, I've sat on a number of other boards. Unfortunately, the last couple of years I've been sick and. Uh, that, but I'm over that. I've been operated on and whatever, but uh, you can't do wrong, I don't think, either with me or with Mr. Peacock, because I know him also. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any questions for the candidates from the audience? My question is Your name for first, please. Karen Poor. I'm a cemetery trustee. And my question is for Mr. Dukoff because he is, if he's elected, are you aware that the town had, in the recent past, a warrant article, and they asked the citizens if they wanted the selectmen to run the cemetery or the cemetery trustees. And the cemetery trustees were nominated, were they won the warrant article. If elected, are you going to try to micromanage the select the cemetery trustees? Or are you going to respect the wishes of the townspeople and let us run them to the best of our ability and hopefully do as good a job as we've been doing? Unfortunately, we're not going to have the leadership of somebody who knows all the ins and outs, and it's not going to be a pleasant year ahead. And it would be nice to know that somebody is not going to be giving, making it more difficult. Mark? Uh, three years ago when I started on the budget committee, it was brought to our attention that the trust fund was running out of money mm -hmm. and something needed to be done. I believe that the voters want to have the trustees run the cemetery. That's the way it should be until the voters decide that they want to change it in a different direction. Now, you just, we just have to get 
the select board and the trustees to work together and try to get some 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 working relationship so everybody can be happy at once. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Steve, would you care to address that? Uh, yeah. Um, my feeling on it is, is, and I believe the rest of the board, and I won't speak for them really, uh, is that it's running out of money, so it's going to be coming out of taxpayers' money. So if the taxpayers are paying it, why not have the selectmen run it? That's my feeling on it. Okay. Other questions from the floor? This will be positive. Jeff Jeffrey stands here. I only speak for myself. I want to make that very clear. Uh, you know, my question when I asked the three school board candidates how they like to campaign either on focusing on the issues or um, attacking character, and the three of them did answer, which I believe is the correct answer, focusing on the issues. Um, today I wrote a letter to the editor that came out in today's Base Sider that really addressed this issue. Do we focus on the issues or do we focus on each other? And then at the end of the day, really, if we don't focus on the issues, I think the community loses. But one of my statements I had uh, about tonight, we can focus on the issue of where we want to see our community go over the next five years, how schools in town and a town are managed, the curriculum taught in our schools, and how the school and town can work collaboratively together with boards, commissions, and trustees in Alton. How would you like to see boards, trustees, uh, and commissions that come under the town of Alton, as well as the Alton School Board, uh, work together in the coming years? Thank you. Steve, we'll start with you on that. Well, um, there's no place in there for character assassinations, uh, which happened a little bit earlier, and, uh, you know, uh, if the taxpayers want it run by the trustees, it's the taxpayers' wishes. So you have to follow the taxpayers' wishes. Unless you feel that um, there's, there's not enough money there for them to run it themselves, then we need to take it over if we're putting in the taxpayers' money. Can I just clarify my question? Yeah. It wasn't, this wasn't relating to the cemetery trustees. This was completely different. How can you see, foresee the like, town boards and the school board working together? Would you like to see uh, joint meetings? Would you like to see uh, cooperative purchasing? Would you like to see a joint website? You know, we have so many resources with the Conservation Commission, the library trustees, uh, I know there's a historical society, not necessarily not a public body, but there's a historical society. How can we together in a town have all of these groups work together for the common good? What are some of the things that you might like to see if you're re-elected as a, as a board of selectmen member, or for Mr. Coffey if he's elected as a board of selectmen member, how would you like to see these town boards work together? Yeah, go ahead. I'd like to see, you know, uh, maybe two, three times a year, the all these boards get together, sit down, go over where they are, what they're doing. We haven't had a town historian, I remember, for the longest time. Um, I'm looking at you. <laughs> I keep asking her, and she had tur turned me down a number of times. I think it's important to remember the history of the town, you know. This is a beautiful town. I mean, I moved up here, and uh, but I'd like to see us get together three times, four times a year, and you know, bang our heads together and let each other know what the other group is doing, and try to work towards it. You know, and see what we can do to help them. See what they can do to help us go from there. Thank you, Steve. Mark? Well, uh, it's obvious that uh, everybody's got different beliefs in the town. That's what makes America so great as, as a country. But what I think possibly could happen is each chairperson from each committee maybe 
once a quarter could get together, discuss things, see which directions. Right, right now we had a CIP. Nobody's on the CIP anymore. So now it's up to the school board to present their capital improvements, and it's up to the budget committee. And it's whatever they decide, not the public's, it would be the public's input at the meetings if, if people go. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions from the floor? Um, being a school board member myself, I know that sometimes it can be difficult when you have accusations of non-transparency or, or perceived issues with it. I know I take it to heart because I was the recording secretary for the budget committee. I've done selectmen's meeting minutes, I've done school boards. I've seen how each of the committee's boards, etc., operate. Everyone serving on those have my respect. I've had situations where we would, I would describe as severe disagreements, um, situations where people get a little beyond passionate about their cause. I don't hold grudges, and Mark knows that. We've talked, right? I want to know, in light of those perceptions, what you would do to make a difference um, in transparency with the um, Board of Selectmen. And I'm not saying that, or implying that the Board of Selectmen are not transparent. I'm just saying what you would do about those perceptions. We'll start with you, Mark. Well, one of the things is, is I'd like to limit the uh, work, close workshops to only if it's personal issues or legal issues. And, and then uh, every other workshop, I'd like to uh, be open to the public. And the workshops during the day, people can't show up during the day, so that there's not much public input for that, so I'd like to see them held in the evening. Thank you. Steve? Yeah, um, the workshops, that, um, when I first came on the board, we used to always have our meetings at 6 o'clock at night. And if that kind of limited the pool of people that were able to serve on these boards. And there are a lot of smart people in this town who could give real good information and expertise <coughs> in different things. But, you know, if you have, you know, meetings during the day, you, you're kind of stuck, you know, because you only have that pool. So, I mean, I don't have a problem with eating in the hour at night. Both people work during the day. Other questions? Mary B. Perhaps this is Mary B. Longabaugh. Perhaps this is more of a comment than a question, but it is a question. A lot of these workshops, I do believe, have happened in the hikey room. And I hope all the selectmen are aware that there is a camera and a whole setup for those meetings to be taped. And Bob will be very glad to come teach anybody who needs to know how to turn the camera on and get the tape going so that these meetings can also be taped and there for the public. Thank you. Thank you. Steve, you want to say anything about that? Well, a lot of times we may be dealing with personnel issues, uh, litigations, things legal, ramifications, you think they have legal ramifications on us, so they have to be done behind closed doors. Character assassinations and things that, uh, I don't know, character assassinations is the right word, but talk about it and not be putting, you don't want to open yourself up to lawsuits, you know, and that's one of the things that over the years has happened, you know, we've had a number of times when we've ended up in lawsuits over different things and it costs the town money, 
Thank you. Mark? Excuse me, Mark. We've lost the audience, so we're going to have to repeat the question and the answer, I'm afraid. Because I certainly want that question and response. You have the question? Are we going to answer? No, no. She has to go back to the mic and ask the question again. Oh, are you getting some? No, oh. I wasn't sure. What did I say? <laughs> <laughs> say, say no comment, I'll say no comment. No comment. Okay, I'm, I'm doing the camera mic. All right. I hear you. Hey, Hun, Hun throw in half the press there at the work, work sessions. Tim, did, did Tim should attend, too, work sessions. Oh, what, what? <laughs> Okay, Mary Beagle on the bottom in the Heike room. If they are general working sessions, uh, I hope that the selectmen realize that they authorized for there to be a camera. There is a whole setup for microphones and to, so that these meetings can be recorded and so the public can see them. I understand you're saying that they may be personal issues or litigation issues. Okay, that's a closed door session wherever you are. But I think you've had some meetings down in the hiking room that have just been work sessions. And I'm saying if that's the case, they need to be taped. Thank you. Uh, hey, go ahead. Yeah. Like I had said earlier, when I first got on the board, Actually, I, I took over from, it was Mr. Longbar's seat. He decided not to run again. And, uh, that was the seat that I ended up with at the time. Um, we did all of our meetings at night. And over the years, we weren't getting people, you know, running. I mean, we were very lucky as far as we brought Sydney Johnson on. She's she's been a great help to us, and uh, I mean, God rest her soul, at four. But you know, she worked third shift sometimes. And she wanted to go from there to a a meeting, you know, instead of trying to go home and get a cat nap in and then come back out. But I'll Okay, Mark? Uh, I think there's funds in the budget for recorders, so if, I don't know if you expect the selectmen to record the meeting themselves or or have somebody come in and record, I, have, I, I would have no problem having the meetings recorded. The only problem there might be is that if it's a short notice meeting, you get the recorder right there. Thanks. Other questions from the uh, from the floor? Krista just said she'd do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm always looking for clients, so sure. Any other questions? Hearing or seeing none, uh, Steve, you want to give oh, a you got my oh. Come on up. John Marklin, I'm going to just throw the log ball in there for you. Uh, could you just tell us, as selectman, what are your top three issues you see facing the town of Alton during your tenure? And what would you like to see addressed during your time as selectman if you're chosen? And, uh, and just a comment, I, I greatly wish whoever is chosen would really work on the website, town website, so that we can have an agenda for the meetings ahead of time because I, I truly would love to attend the meetings. I'd love to see the agenda beforehand to see what's on. Uh, so you can't use that as one of the issues. <laughs> Why don't you start with you, Mark? Well, one of the, what I really want to do is take the position and work for the voters and what they what they want. One of the biggest things we're gonna problems we're gonna have is. Uh, taxes and the uh, people being able to afford the increase in taxes. The economy is not uh, turning around as fast as everybody hoped. Housing prices are way down and a lot of people are underwater on their mortgages. And the other 
issue was going to be to try to keep the uh, town government <coughs> from uh, growing too fast to keep up with the uh, rate of the recovery of uh, the economy. And that's the only real issues I see right now. Thank you. Thank you. Steve? Yeah, I think we were very fortunate uh, here in Alton. Uh, we're very land rich in that. Had a lot of beautiful homes put up around the lake and stuff like that. And they, our tax rate, I think, is 1307. I mean, and if you take a look around and look at the other area communities, you'll see that they're a lot higher than what ours is. And I mean, can't beat what we have yet. And, you know, and that is also, at the same time, we've been able to work on the infrastructure of the, the town. We've continued to pave roads, do things that had to be done. We've had some wonderful projects, the railroad park, which is being worked on, the senior center, which is being worked on, and, uh, I'd just like to thank everybody for coming out tonight, and uh, I'll call it a night. Thank you. Any other questions from the floor? Hearing and seeing that, I will ask you to sum it up. Uh, you get up to 30 seconds if you want to make a plea for votes. Steve, you have first. Like I said earlier, uh, I've been on the board for 12 years. Uh, the last two years, I was a little sick. I ended up going in for some major surgeries and stuff like that. But um, I'm back and running again. And uh, the one thing I did do was is I made sure that I kept on abreast of what was going on in town. I call the town administrator on an everyday basis if I couldn't make a meeting, and I asked him what happened. I wanted to know, you know, plus I would get the minutes. So, uh, I guess that's it. Thank you, Steve. Mark? I'd like to thank everybody for attending tonight, and I'd uh, ask that you vote for me in the March election, and I look forward to serving you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the candidates for selection.